Kelso Longview Chamber of Commerce, proud sponsors of the Washington State 19th Legislative District candidate debate. Our Chamber of Commerce gives out tourist information and industrial development information. This office gladly gives out information of the states of Washington and Oregon, the lower Columbia River area, the ocean beaches, hotels, motels, mountain resorts, and hunting guides and highway reports. Kelso Longview Chamber of Commerce. It's the region's leading literary lifestyle publication. From offices in Longview, Columbia River Reader distributes 15,000 copies a month, helping you to discover and enjoy the good life around the Columbia River region, at home and on the road. Pick up your free copy today or join our Collectors Club. Since 2004, Columbia River Reader. It's Pons and Instruments, downtown Longview. They have shotguns, rifles, knives, bow hunting equipment, musical instruments, guitars, drums, keyboards, amps, picks, strings, drumsticks, and accessories, fishing gear, reels, reels, line, lures, DVD, Blu-ray, and Disney, free popcorn for kids 12 and under, Pets, Pawns, and Instruments, proud sponsor of the Washington State 19th Legislative District candidate debates. All right, you're watching Cal Citizens Update. I'm your host, Spencer Boudreaux. We are here coming to you live from the Monticello Ballroom. We are joined by two candidates for county commissioner. We have incumbent Dennis Weber, uh, former mayor of Longview. We have challenger Kurt Anagnostu, also former mayor of Longview and former PUD commissioner. Uh, they have been gracious enough to join us tonight for this debate. I will be asking the questions on screen, stepping off screen for their answers. Candidates have two minutes for an opening statement, two minutes each for answers to the questions, and one minute each for a rebuttal if they choose to do so, and two minutes for a closing statement. Uh, with that, uh, who would like to answer questions first? Go ahead and let, let the challenger. <laughs> the challenger will answer questions first. Okay. Uh, with that, Thank you. absolutely, you have the opportunity for your opening statement. Thank you. I am Kurt Anagnostu. I am running for Calitz County Commissioner District 2. I am a native of Longview. I was born here. Uh, my family moved away, and that was before I went into high school. Uh, so I went to high school, college, and law school in California. And as soon as I was done with law school, I, uh, I headed straight back up here to Calitz County, beautiful Calitz County. Um, my, I have a uh, brother and three sisters that continue to live in Calais County. This is our home, it, and it, it, we love this area. Uh, in, uh, I started practicing law and raising a family. In 2000, I ran for Longview City Council. I served 12 years on Longview City Council, the last four of which I was mayor of the city of Longview. I then ran for PUD commissioner, and I served six years on the PUD. I bring that up because both of those positions are nonpartisan, and I'm running as an independent. Um, I, I believe that things have basically gotten too um, confrontational, too political. Any citizen should be able to approach me with any issue they have with local government and have it understood that their position will be taken seriously and considered, uh, and that's what I'm proposing. Um, most of the commissioners in this area, in, in Wakaikum County, Pacific County, and in, in Grace Harbor, are nonpartisan. Uh, local government should be nonpartisan. Uh, all the people, all the voices of the citizens should be heard, and that's why I am running for Calais County Commissioner. Thank you. The opportunity now for Mr. Weber to give his opening statement. Thank you, Spencer, and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for giving us this opportunity to talk tonight. It has been my privilege and honor to serve the citizens of Callitz County and before that the citizens of Longview for most of my adult life. I say that with a certain degree of humility because the challenges that face us in public life are enormous. N not only are the decisions that we have to make on behalf of people who are in need of assistance and of help uh, critical, but to be in the arena, 
to be in the arena, as Teddy Roosevelt used to say, does carry with it a personal and emotional cost. There are phone calls 24-7. You cannot go on vacation unless you go incommunicado. And I've never felt that that's appropriate if you're a public servant. Or you can't go to the grocery store without people talking, you, talking to you, asking you questions, or demanding action. These things are part of the job. These things I welcome. I've been doing it for a long time. Because at the base of it, our job is to listen to you. This is your county. This is your home. I was born and raised here. I met my wife, we got married, and we raised our kids here. This is our home. We want to continue to make this a great place. There are glitches, there are problems, there are challenges, but we have an obligation to do the right thing and to make this place even better. Thank you. Thank you for your opening statements, candidates. Our first question tonight, again, going first to Mr. Anagnostu, what is your vision for Cowlitz County in four years? Uh, in four years, I would like to see Cowlitz County uh, become more inclusive. Uh, I'll use that word. Um, it's, uh, it appears to me there's a, a lot of conflict um, between the commissioners currently. Uh, there's conflict between the county government and the cities, uh, and there just seems to be a lot of conflict. Um, you know, currently we are in the, you know, the throes of the pandemic. Um, you know, hopefully we're going to get out of that, get the businesses reopened, and get back to business. Um, we have, uh, you know, other issues facing the county. I, I just, my goal would be uh, to create a, uh, a government that is inclusive, where we sit down with all the, the mayors and, uh, and city managers of the cities in Cowles County and work together. I, I firmly believe that we can do better working together, and that's what I promote, and that's what I would be attempting to accomplish in the next four years. The same question to Mr. Weber. Thank you. For the next four years, we need to be very proactive in terms of supporting our current industries so that people continue to have jobs. There are a lot of things that we can do to retain businesses here. And we also need to continue to advocate for business expansion, new industries, new sources of jobs. I had an interesting occasion once when I was in the grocery store to meet a, a former student of mine uh, who had left, joined the military, served two tours of duty over in Afghanistan. He greeted me warmly and he said, Mr. Weber, I'm so excited. My wife and I have decided to come home to Longview and we want to raise our family here but I can't find a job. And that hit home, because when I was growing up, there were plenty of jobs. Callis County had the highest employment of Washington State, and, and that has changed. And technology has changed the nature of jobs, and education is as important as it ever has been. But there are things that we can do to press the point that Callis County is the place to come and bring businesses. At the same time, we also understand demographics, and we have to maintain and improve the quality of place so that people who choose to live their golden years here have a, have a safe community, have the amenities like a beautiful lake and hiking paths and bike paths to really enjoy this setting. So jobs, quality of place, and a fairer, more uh, just community. Thank you. The next question, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing Cowlitz County today? First to uh, Mr. Anagnostu. Uh, the biggest issue, uh, where do I begin? It, it, it kind of ends up being the issue of the week. Uh, so uh, last week we had the fires and the smog and, and uh, we have a, uh, basically the, the effects of that that affected all of our citizens. Um, we have a, a terrible homeless situation down on Alabama Street. Uh, that's a, a big issue. But, um, and we have the pandemic. Overlaying all these other issues, we have the pandemic. Um, the, the biggest issue, I think, is going to be getting businesses and schools 
and all of our 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 processes, I'll put it that way, um, open. We, we need to open up, uh, get back to open, get back to uh, fully uh, being open, but it has to be safe. It has to be in a, in a completely safe and um, scientific manner whereby we open up the, the economy, open up the county, open up the schools. There's a lot of pain. Uh, my business has suffered through uh, this pandemic and through what's going on. Um, and I know, you know, I've talked to a lot of people, and, and it is it is hard times. It's been very hard on our businesses. Uh, we need to to in help the businesses in every aspect of opening up safely, and that should be the goal of the county. The next question, well, the same question to uh, Commissioner Weber. In your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing Cowlitz County today? So I think there are th three big issues that we need to be careful to uh, address. Uh, the first one, again, as my opponent pointed out, is doing what we can to get Cowlitz County opened again. Um, the suffering is very real. People are losing their jobs. They're losing their incomes. And I think part of our role, since we're not the ones who shut down any of the businesses, is to advocate on, part, on the part of our citizens when those rules and regulations are unfairly uh, levied. On a, on a place where the epidemic has not reached uh, epic proportions. It is and always needs to be in the foremost part of everyone's mind that we take the necessary steps to stay safe. The social distancing, as is demonstrated by the stage here tonight, uh, the personal hygiene, self-quarantining when that is absolutely necessary. So we need to do what we can to advocate for fair application of the rules to Callas County. The second one I already mentioned, and that is advocating for long-term economic growth, not only to create the quality of life that attracts uh, seniors and, and families, but also providing the incomes for families to raise their kids here, to do the things both my opponent and I have been fortunate enough to, to uh, benefit from. And that does require an ongoing effort on the part of government to advocate for us. And uh, if we have to go to Olympia, if we have to complain against the, the, the rulers whose values aren't Callas County values, we need to be doing that. Mr. Anagnostu, do you have a one minute rebuttal? Um, sure. <laughs> I hadn't expected that. Uh, yeah, one minute. Um, uh, and I think it comes up in one of your later questions, but I don't believe that passing uh, resolutions criticizing what's going on is helpful. It, 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 it doesn't help. How do we help businesses open safely? Uh, and that's what we need to be uh, working toward. Um, and, uh, you know, resolutions uh, criticizing what is going on in our government, criticizing uh, the authority to issue executive emergency orders doesn't help. It doesn't help the, the businesses open, and, I, and the county should be trying to help businesses open safely. Do you have a one-minute rebuttal to that? Sure, and, and I think one of the patterns that uh, Joe Gardner and I have followed very consistently with these resolutions is to tone the language down where it bordered on illegal uh, advocacy and emphasize the importance of personal responsibility to be safe, to stay safe, and still to point out when the rules are not fair. And you will never be able to convince me that uh, box, only box stores, uh, liquor stores, and cannabis stores are essential businesses, but florists, churches, museums, and libraries are somehow non-essential. That's not right, and we need to fight for fairness in these rules. Thank you. The next question, first to Mr. Anagnostu, the management of the headquarters landfill has been a point of contention for the last few years in this county. What is your understanding of the situation and what, and what will you do if elected or re-elected in your case? Uh, yes, my understanding is that there was a consideration on the part of the, count, the commissioners uh, to sell the landfill, uh, to sell it for um, a substantial sum of money that we could use towards other uh, programs. Um, and uh, there is a, a, a very public fight between uh, Mr. Weber and, and Mr. Mortensen um, about that issue. 
to the point where uh, he put on a Facebook a, a scathing a letter criticizing his fellow commissioner. Uh, and um, they've gone kind of back and forth about who was uh, promoting selling the landfill. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it's back to working together. I think we can do better on this. And what the commissioners need to do is say they're not going to sell the landfill. Uh, we need to con maintain that asset and control, uh, you know, what goes into it and have some, some you know, say over uh, the use of the landfill. We built the landfill, it's ours, and, we sh and it's, a, it's a source of revenue for the uh, county right now, and we should maintain that. And we just need to tell the public that, because this fight has made them nervous. Everybody's nervous. This question is, is nervous. What's going to happen with the landfill? I think everybody just needs to say we're going to keep it, we're going to maintain it, we're going to manage it to the best of our community, um, and that needs to be a, a solid front of the commissioner. The same question to Commissioner Weber. The management of the headquarters landfill has been a point of contention. What is your understanding of the situation, and what will you do if reelected? So I'd like to rephrase that question, because the contention is in the past. Even Mr. Mortensen brags about how well the county is running the landfill. So the idea of selling the landfill is off the table. It has been. In fact, the first time we received an offer from a company called uh, Waste Connections, when they offered to buy it, this was years before even Mr. Mortensen was on the commission, um, it occurred to me that the only reason they wanted to buy that landfill was to make a heck of a lot of money off of it. And I said, no, that money belongs here in Callis County. We bought it. it, it should remain with us. And so I stopped that sale early on. Then shortly after Mr. Mortensen uh, took office, we found out that the top two managers of the landfill were retiring right away. And I was supportive of Mr. Mortensen's investigation into private management. Sa sale was not an issue. And I've never accused Mr. Mortensen of promising to sell the landfill. But he was an advocate for giving control over to a private entity. Um, I kept hearing from the people that was not the right thing to do. And if there's any controversy now, it might very well be that they remember that Mr. Morton said wanted to privatize management, and they're remembering that. Um, but the controversy's gone. We're united in going forward and in, in doing that. One of the interesting little side notes is that Waste Connections purchased Waste Control and they now are the, are the folks picking up the garbage and using the, the landfill. The meetings that we've had with them, our staff and Waste Connections, have been very amicable, very positive, and uh, it's be, being well run. We are making about $6 million a year in, in rent off of that facility for the use by Callips County. And uh, in order to get there, I went to the city leaders and talked with them and set forward a whole bunch of different goals that we'll be able to, to use that money for. Thank you. Mr. Anagnostu, do you have a one minute rebuttal? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's good that uh, the commissioners come out and announce that they're unified on not selling the landfill mm -hmm. and managing that asset uh, to the best mm -hmm. of the citizens. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a good thing. Thank you. The next question, again, first to Mr. Anagnostu, explain your understanding of the county's employee health savings account system. Uh, my understanding of uh, the health saving uh, system is that uh, employees are entitled uh, to uh, health coverage. It's high deductible, high deductible health coverage. And then they get, um, depending on what they choose, they can either choose Kaiser or they can choose uh, Primera. Uh, and depending on what they choose, they get it paid into account either 100 or $150 that, that they can then spend on co-pays and those type of things for the high deductible plan. Uh, there's another element of it, and, and this is kind of common, it was kind of similar to what we had over at the PUD. Um, if, if somebody has health insurance, say their spouse has a health insurance, so they don't, they don't need it, um, they can waive the health insurance through the county uh, and uh, a fee of $750 goes into uh, the health fund. Um, and those funds are, are they come, they're paid pre-tax and they go specifically to medical care. 
um, and um, it, it's kind of a standard plan. I know I, in talking with some of the, the employees, they're kind of criticizing because the amount keeps getting changed. How much gets paid in uh, has been reduced um, uh, over the years. Um, but that's, that's what I understand about the plan. It's kind of a typical plan. A lot of it is controlled by uh, federal uh, statutes. Thank you. The same question to Commissioner Weber. Explain your understanding of the county's employee health and savings account system. So most of the employees have the system that, that Kurt described. That there's an opportunity to create a health savings plan, which gives a lot more flexibility. A health savings plan is, is, has assets that you can carry with you if you leave employment. The VIVA plan that, she, that he described with uh, folks who use their spouses, that is much more restricted. It, it stays with the em employee. Uh, but these are all things designed to help facilitate people taking the high deductible. If people choose, for example, if you have a lot of kids and your expenses might be much higher, um, you, you can choose a lower deductible. The fee is a little bit higher and the cost is a little bit more. We, have, uh, we pay a set fee for everybody's premium and that is negotiable, and that quite frequently is raised 50 bucks a month um, throughout the, a contract. So it's close to 1450 a month or 1500 I can't keep track of which, which year we were in in any particular contract. So we do, we do try to make it easy to finance that high deductible with these savings options. Thank you. Do you have a rebuttal? Uh, no, it's uh, no, straightforward. Next question, what can you do to improve access to public lands in Cowlitz County, if elected? Uh, to improve access to public lands, we have, we have lots of public lands. Um, and to improve access, you're generally talking about money, uh, either roads or trails or uh, some kind of expense. And so uh, that has to be managed within the budget uh, of the county. Um, and, and and there's ideas out there that I would love to explore as a commissioner. Um, I've, I've heard this idea of the uh, the warehouser track up to, to Green Mountain that goes by Fisher's Lane, um, making that a walking trail. Um, people can, or biking trail, bike across the bridge that goes over into Kelso and then on up up to uh, Green Mountain. Um, that would be. I, I mean, people are excited about uh, that type of project. But you have to find the funding. You have to, the, the commissioners um, uh, on limited funds um, can only do so much. Uh, there's other ideas, but, um, you know, we have some of the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and um, uh, as, as the county, we should be doing everything we can, but there's limits to what we can do. But I would be excited about looking into projects, attempting to find funding uh, for projects to increase uh, people uh, using public land. Commissioner, the same question to you. What can you do to improve access to public lands in Cowlitz County? Sure, thank you. We have a number of options that are, are possible, one in the area of creating uh, rails to trails. Um, we've been in negotiations with um, Patriot Rail uh, for a number of years. I, I, again, the issue is how do you finance the acquisition of the rights to use those trails? Um, and from the main line up to the old Green Mill site, um, Patriot is not the owner. Um, and in fact, that, that route is owned by Weyerhaeuser, and they've already announced they're not at all interested in converting any of that stuff. It's their property. So that's a little bit off. However, there's another option on, on acquisition or, or access, and, and that is through organizations like the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, who buy access to places that are blocked from highway access, and they will raise money and they'll buy a strip that will get people, give people access to public lands where they can hunt and fish. And they've done that quite a bit. It's a great organization that, that I support. Uh, a, a third area is one that is really intriguing because it involves the methanol plant. As you may remember, the Kalama methanol plant carries with it a promise and an expectation from the company that they will mitigate 100% of the cost of the fossil fuels that they use in that production process to the tune of about $8 million a year. And they have at least verbally agreed that they would like a lot of that, if not all of it, spent here in Cowlitz County to help build uh, appropriate uh, uh, quality of place activities. 
So you get that by supporting that application and getting that, that mill built. Do you have a rebuttal? Uh, no. <laughs> Next question, first to you again. How do you feel the county has managed the COVID-19 pandemic and the effects of that? Uh, okay, I, uh, and, and Commissioner Weber is, uh, is aware that I am critical of the passing of resolutions that don't help. Uh, in late May, uh, they passed a resolution, take no action, um, and that ended up leading to a July 4th uh, celebration at Lake Sacagawea. They basically left uh, the city of Longview to try to deal with that problem on their own uh, because they had this take no action. Uh, they had you know, county board of health authority that could have uh, stepped in or other resources. The, the city did what they could. They put up barricades and that kind of stuff. They got a report from an epidemiologist that, that definitively said um, that the July 4th, there was an increase in cases two weeks later or so, 10 days later. We had an increase because of uh, what happened over the 4th of July. They just recently passed another resolution um, where they indicate that uh, the, amongst many whereases, they, whereases are supposed to support a resolution, they're supposed to be the foundation. They said, uh, whereas their treatment is um, readily available uh, and effective at low cost to the citizen. That's one of their whereases. Um, now, that may be true for somebody who gets over it without any, any treatment at all. So doing nothing is a treatment. But when you're talking about 200,000 dead Americans, their families would say there is no effective treatment readily available for our citizens. That resolution, I don't think, is based on, on the facts of, of the COVID. And we need to be promoting to the, to the uh, businesses uh, to open safely and you know the the science is that wearing a mask um, it helps this. It, it protects when you wear it. You're protecting other people and vice versa. We should be promoting that. Same question to you. How do you feel the county has uh, handled the COVID nineteen pandemic and the effects there of it? Well, I did mention a couple of points that we made that when the rules are unfairly applied, when the rules are unfairly applied, uh, we have a we have a responsibility to advocate. Um, what my opponent failed to point out is that in each of those resolutions, uh, Commissioner Gardner and I insisted that the words of caution, of personal hygiene, personal responsibility be at the forefront. Fact of the matter is that we did peak in the number of uh, infections reported uh, the, uh, uh, two weeks after the 4th of July. We had a little peak after Easter. We had a little peak after uh, Memorial Day weekend. And in fact, we have a little peak after Labor Day. That's part of the human experience. We're a family-oriented community and families getting together. At the same time, we have very few people that have been hospitalized and very few people that have, that have died. And I said, uh, and that's because we have the capability and the, the responsibility that citizens have to be safe. And I think that's the, the appropriate manner. Again, we still need to advocate for opening up. Uh, and what's interesting is that the governor does react to public pressure that's given uh, when things are done unfairly. He's made some modifications all along. Um, and it wouldn't happen if counties like Callis County didn't speak up and, and say, we, we want fairness in these rules. So uh, th the goal that we need to get to is the magic number of under 25 cases in the two week, a two week period previously. And we were at that for a short period of time in August, and then Labor Day hit and we're up above that again, and hopefully we can start going back down. People of Cowles County know what to do to be safe and stay safe, and, and I, I have uh, full confidence that we'll be able to bring those numbers back down. Mr. Anagnostu, do you have a one-minute rebuttal to that? Uh, sure. Uh, the resolution that they recently passed included a statement that there are other uh, ways of dying uh, or people dying in this country that equal uh, COVID-19, and, and that's an inaccurate statement. There is um, heart attacks and cancer. Those are both in the roughly 600,000 figure. This was given to them by the epidemiologist. There's car wrecks and a few things that are all well below COVID-19. Um, but you don't catch 
you don't catch cancer, you don't catch car wrecks, you catch COVID-19, and that's what the issue we're dealing with, and that's why it's an emergency. Uh, and I, to, to put a resolution out that is fundamentally, the whereases are not uh, based, that's a slippery slope. You can't have government making decisions based on bold statements. Uh, we just don't want to do that. Commissioner Weber, do you have a one-minute rebuttal to his rebuttal? Um, I've actually been severely criticized by members of my own party for not fully supporting that, um, th that resolution. We did uh, tone the language down to make it legal, so actually we could save our jobs. So um, it, it's not as draconian as my opponent would lead you to believe, and, and I'm definitely against the uh, more draconian measure that was uh, inappropriate. Mr. Anagnostu, the next question, what steps can you take if elected to address the homeless situation in Cowlitz County? Not solve, but address. Uh, and it's a, a criticism I have of the commissioners. Um, we, we should have applied for the shelter grant and obtained the shelter grant. Here's the issue. Uh, the Ninth Circuit uh, in a, a case of Boise versus Martin uh, indicated that we cannot um, legally punish uh, homeless people unless there are alternatives available for them. If they have no alternatives, um, then uh, they get to sleep in City Hall, you know, the grass at City Hall, which is what we were having. Um, and so the, the shelter grant, the, the issue I have with the commissioners is over the term low barrier. Uh, they, they could promote that low barrier means no rules, and that's just not true. It is not true. Uh, the shelter grant would have allowed a, a, a hosted site. The hosted site could have rules um, and uh, could have uh, helped get services to, the, to our homeless people. We have anywhere between 130 and 150 people out on Alabama Street living in the dirt except for a week ago, they started living in the mud because the rain started. Uh, it is a horrible situation. It is, you know, I've visited it several times. Our, our most um, downtrodden citizens are, uh, we are not doing what is, is morally and legally right, I believe. Uh, we should have uh, applied for that. The only alternative is to now use document recording fees. I don't think it makes much sense that we take fees that we could be using for something else with regards to the homeless and now use them uh, because we didn't apply for the shelter grant. Uh, we need a hosted site. Bottom line, answer to your question, we need a hosted site for those citizens that find themselves homeless. Same question to Commissioner Weber. What steps can you take to address the homeless situation, not solve, but address in Cowlitz County? Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that my opponent is supporting our position on the, on the commission. And that is to provide a hosted tent city that provides the kinds of uh, services that are necessary. The problem with the shelter grant application was there was a page filled with rules and restrictions, line after line after line, saying that we couldn't have the treatment, that we couldn't require behavior rules, that we had these restrictions. Um, and it was for a limited amount of time. So we opted not to take that grant because that had unacceptable rules. And we've chosen instead to create a system that will work, that will reflect Callis County rules, that will bring safety and security to the folks that are severely mentally handicapped as they try to struggle and reason their way into a, a decent type of living. Right now, they simply can't do it. I think we agree that the Alabama site is a, a it's inhumane. Um, and the folks there feel like they're slaves to that life and existence. We are going to do better. We're going to do better with a facility that will help them transform their lives. Now, there will be some people who don't like that. They don't want the rules because they're the ones that are benefiting from the current system. That is, the guy that's a couple tents down from the person who's really not feeling well is more than willing to sell the drugs that will do a temporary uh, help. They're not going to be allowed in, in the kind of shelter that w we're going to have. That's what being hosted is all about. Rules, regulation, safety, security, san san uh, san sanitation, and the kind of mental health that they desperately need.
Mr. Anagnostu, do you have a one-minute rebuttal? Uh, sure. Um, the, the kind of the issue I have is uh, we've had this homeless issue now going on a year. Uh, the Alabama site, I think, has been uh, they've been there for nine months or so since February, um, and uh, you know it, it is to uh, uh, abandon that issue to the city of Long Beach and say, look, you take care of it. Uh, and before that, they abandoned the issue, uh, from my point of view, in Kelso when they had Love Overwhelming running a facility. Um, the county needs to be drawing all these uh, organizations and, and the, the people with an interest in this issue to the table, uh, working together uh, to solve this issue. Uh, the, the issue is, of course, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal decision says it has to be no barrier or low barrier. Do you have a one minute rebuttal to his rebuttal? Sure, I, I, I think uh, m my opponent made a stumble in his last statement that is um, un unfortunate but very real in this community. Most people equate the low barrier concept with no barrier because the only experience we've had is the one where love overwhelming was unable to uh, maintain any any kind of order in the house that they operated adjacent to the county parking lot. When we had uh, female employees beg us to do something about the crazy people walking into their bathroom so that they felt unsafe, we had to do something and we we ended up buying that building and shutting that down. It was a drug house, it was inappropriate, and if that's the example of a no barrier program that my opponent favors, I'm sorry, that is just simply not acceptable. We'll do it right. We'll do it in a way that reflects Callas County values. Because we're running short on time tonight, we don't want to keep you watching till nine o'clock. We're gonna ask two last questions. The first one, what is the main difference between you and your opponent? And that's for both of you. No rebuttal on those. Two minutes to you and two minutes to you. Okay. Um, well, the, uh, I guess my background, um, I've been an attorney, I've been uh, a city council member and, and mayor, but so is my opponent, so that's not a difference. And I've known, I've known uh, Dennis for a long time. Um, the, the main difference is I, I absolutely, um, have the belief, I, I absolutely cannot go along to get along. I, I can't do it, I, it's just not in me. Um, so what, what that means and, and what I, I tend to see is a lot of times, on the, especially this last resolution, the commissioners went along with it instead of standing up and saying, these whereases are not correct, we can't do this. Uh, and, and you do that in a, in a respectful manner. Uh, the commissioner meetings seem to be very conflicted um, on occasion, uh, very conflicted. Um, and I would just, uh, my main difference is, uh, you know, I'm not going to go along to get along. Uh, I'm going to research uh, the issues. I'm going to take input from the citizens. I'll look at all issues as I do as an attorney and in my cases from all sides and make a decision based on what is best for everyone. That's what I did at city council and that's what I do, uh, that's what I did at the, uh, and that's what I do for the uh, county. Same question to you. What is the same different, the main difference between you and your opponent? I, I think probably the biggest one is I'm, I'm not a lawyer. We have a lawyer that acts on our behalf, tells us what is within the legal limits and, and boundaries. Um, so um, that, those are the reasons we have to do uh, follow the rules uh, on that. I, I think the other thing that my opponent just pointed out is that he sounds like he wants to be confrontational. And, uh, you know, this, despite a few disagreements Mr. Mortensen and I have had, we actually tend to agree a, a lot alike on an awful lot of different issues. We have poured resources into the sheriff's office. We've mutually supported that. We agree very much that uh, we should continue to support our judges in the use of the ICE contract to take care of detainees in a, in a safe and humane manner. Uh, we have also persevered and in insisting on, on good performance measures from departments getting grants from the, from the government. So um, we actually do have a lot more in common. In fact, 
he actually does joke about how often he and I agree on things. So you don't necessarily need to believe all of the conflict. That just happens to get the communication. Um, most of the time, the controversy is not what it seems. With that, the final question tonight, do you believe the county, and you briefly addressed it, do you believe the county should continue with their contract with the uh, detainees with Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE? To you first. Um, I, I guess I'm going to answer that question with a, um, I don't know. Um, so I am somewhat familiar with it, um, and I'll tell you I'm morally opposed to um, incarcerating children just because they uh, are claim to be illegal aliens. I mean, we're talking about children, uh, and, and that uh, that weighs heavily on me. But um, as I've indicated, I look at an issue. I you know I'd want to see um, you know why this was established here in Calais County. What are the rules? Uh, you know why we're doing this. Uh, see it from all sides and make a decision. Um, and uh, but I would be honest to the citizens coming into it, um, uh, looking as an outsider looking in. Uh, I am opposed uh, to what's happening uh, at our at our jail, but I would look at it uh, and take input from all sides to make a decision. Same question to you, uh, Commissioner Weber. Do you believe the county should continue with their contract for ICE detainees? Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to correct one, uh, two errors that my opponent made. We are not jailing those kids. They're in a youth services center, sometimes called juvie, but they are provided safety, security, medicine, education. And in fact, if you talk to staffers who actually work with these older teenagers, they're not even children, they're older teenagers, many of them prefer to be here in relative sa safety from the gang influence back home. So, you know, that's just part of the facts. But the, but the more important thing is, is that our Youth Services Center is supervised by the five Superior Court judges. They are far more expert at determining the legality of that whole program, as long as they are satisfied that the program is a net benefit to those uh, detainees, I'm going to defer to their judgment. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it should, should be. Do you have a one minute rebuttal? Um, yeah. Uh, juvenile Hall is a jail. They cannot come and go as they please. That's the definition of a jail. Um, and to say uh, otherwise is uh, disingenuous. Um, you know, it, it's a significant issue. I would, I would need to look at it um, and take all this uh, input. Um, but generally, uh, you know, I, I don't agree that, that that we should be incarcerating children. Do you have a rebuttal to his rebuttal? Yes, I, I will have to admit that I do agree with Judge uh, Stephen Warning, retired Judge Warning who says that I should be more forthcoming with the information. Um, and that's only fair. It puts us in an awkward spot. I trust our judges, um, and uh, it, they aren't children. Um, and the decent thing is to help them avoid the gang influence so that it will get them in even worse trouble. Thank you. Well, with that, we are now going to go to the individual two-minute uh, candidate closing statements. Um, Mr. Anagnostu, you first. Uh, in closing, um, I uh, am offering my love of this community um, and my significant experience as an attorney, uh, city councilman, and mayor of the city of Longview and PUD commissioner uh, to um, to the citizens of Calais County uh, to act as their, their commissioner. I would like to say, you know, at the city of Longview, I took over mayor in 2008 when we had the uh, tremendous economic decline. Um, we, uh, you know, we went through the budget top to bottom so that the city could function appropriately. Um, I did the same thing at the PUD. Um, 
I, uh, we went through the budget. Uh, the PUD was 250 million in debt. It had no reserve fund. They had raised rates 28% in one year uh, prior to me being elected. I would, I would do that for the county. I would go through the budget uh, and I would uh, analyze it as I do all the other issues and come up with a best decision uh, for the citizens of Calus County. That's what I'm offering. The same to you, your two-minute candidate closing statement. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to share uh, views and, and, and my record. Uh, I want to tell a short story, however. Um, back when I was mayor uh, in, in the city of Longview, I was at my office one day when the staff came and said, we have to, we're, we're renting uh, the McClellan Arts Center to a church. And uh, I said, that's fine, we do that all the time, what's the problem? And they said, well, you should find out a little bit more about this church. And it turns out that it was a church that preached white supremacy. And I said, isn't there another facility that we can rent them to? And they said, that's the only one that they want. And of course, that was adjacent to Victoria Freeman Park. And so it was a dilemma. They have a First Amendment right to do what they do. Um, and we can't discriminate against them uh, on the basis of their religion. But I also felt that the people of Longview deserved to exercise their First Amendment and unwelcome them. And so I asked the council to uh, ask a, an outpouring of support uh, to uh, demonstrate our, our displeasure. And we ended up on the day that they opened with a thousand people marching, a peaceful demonstration. They stared down the minister, no communication. He said, it looks like I'm not welcomed. Uh, four years later, when I was mayor again, he wrote a letter of apology. That's leadership that we need. Somebody who can be bold and take decisive action. That's what I've done, and that's what I'll continue to do on your behalf for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us here tonight, and thank you to the viewers. You can find out more information about both candidates on their websites. Your website is? Uh, Kurt for Commish. And your website? WeberforCallets.org. Kurt for Kamish, WeberforCallets.org. With that, this has been Callets Citizens Update. Thank you so much for tuning in to our 2020 Callets County Commissioner debate for position two. Join us next week, next Thursday night, again at 6 p.m. for the 2020 19th Legislative District candidate debate uh, between incumbent uh, State Senator Dean Taco, challenger Port of Longview Commissioner Jeff Wilson, uh, incumbent State House Representative Brian Blake, his challenger Joel McIntyre, and uh, State Representative incumbent Jim Walsh, and hopefully his opponent Mariana Everson. We will update you on more information on that as we get closer. Remember to give this a like and a share so that more Callitz County residents are more informed on who to vote for for Callitz County Commissioner and other local races. With that, we'll take you home. Kelso Longview Chamber of Commerce, proud sponsors of the Washington State 19th Legislative District candidate debate. Our Chamber of Commerce gives out tourist information and industrial development information. This office gladly gives out information of the states of Washington and Oregon, the lower Columbia River area, the ocean beaches, hotels, motels, mountain resorts, and hunting guides and highway reports. Kelso Longview Chamber of Commerce. It's the region's leading literary lifestyle publication. From offices in Longview, Columbia River Reader distributes 15,000 copies a month, helping you to discover and enjoy the good life around the Columbia River region, at home and on the road. Pick up your free copy today or join our Collectors Club. Since 2004, Columbia River Reader.
and his pawns and instruments downtown Longview. They have shotguns, rifles, knives, bow hunting equipment, musical instruments, guitars, drums, keyboards, amps, picks, strings, drumsticks, and accessories, fishing gear, reels, grills, line, lures, DVD, Blu-ray, and Disney, free popcorn for kids 12 and under, pets, pawns, and instruments, proud sponsors of the Washington State 19th Legislative District candidate debates.